in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to our celebration of today's Eucharist. Uh, today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, so it's within the, it's at the end of the Easter octave, as we call it. And, uh, and this is also what we call Divine Mercy Sunday. Uh, many of you are familiar, I don't know if there's an image in this it's church, but... Uh, Oh, okay. So I can't see it, right? But it's there. It's there. Wonderful. A delight to be with you today uh, as we celebrate this Eucharist, uh, always in a spirit of joy, the joy of Easter, uh, so we can cry out as we did in the opening hymn, our Alleluia. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Good morning once again. I just want to uh, take this opportunity to welcome Archbishop uh, Gerard Petitva, amid us in Grimshaw. It's a happy time for us. Uh, we wanted the Archbishop to be part of our services, and uh, today is the day. And today is a happy day, as Archbishop just mentioned. It's a Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. Archbishop, we are glad to have you as part of our community here as Grimshaw and uh, White Club. Thank you very much. And I've always felt that when I come to this community. Uh, it's always a very welcoming community and uh, delighted to be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us begin by acknowledging our sins and asking God for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and in you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and, and soul, and no one claimed to claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in, in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid them at the, feet of the, they laid them at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love, we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. 
and the Spirit is the one who testifies, for the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thank you, to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you, he said to Thomas. Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ.
Some of you who are as old as I am may remember the TV series Quincy. Quincy was a coroner who worked alongside the police force trying to solve crimes, usually murders. The whodunit mystery is a favorite genre of fiction. In many, if not all, the body surfaces which almost certainly suffered the ill effects of murder. The first challenge faced by detectives is to identify the body. Who was this? Identifying marks on the body or dental records seem to provide the best clues. This was before DNA analysis was perfected. Doubt turns to certainty when a scar or other such indelible mark accurately identifies the person in question. Many of the gospel stories read like such a tale. Can this really be Jesus? How do you know? Do we know what Jesus looked like in real life? We don't have photographs, of course. Over the centuries, artists have drawn, painted, or sculpted many images and icons. When I visited them several years ago, the Legionnaires of Christ at the Notre Dame Center had a life-size statue of Jesus taken from the markings found on the Shroud of Turin. Some images of Christ tied into a particular culture or ethnicity. I've seen pictures of a Chinese Jesus or an African. And why not? He is the God-man, after all, who belongs to all races and peoples. We are all made in God's image and likeness. So while we look for a characteristic beard and long hair, wearing a flowing robe, what Thomas looked for were scars and wounds. Like the police detective, Thomas would be convinced that the wounds of Jesus' body were those that he saw inflicted as he hung upon the cross. Jesus is known by his wounds. Even in his resurrected body, which rose above and beyond things of this life, the marks of the nails and the spear were still evident. Is it not also true of us, you and me? Of course it is. Your wounds tell so many stories about your life. You can hardly see them anymore, but at about four years of age, I suffered a hatchet cut to the back of my neck. And at about age 12, a bicycle accident left a scar on my left knee. As I anointed a man once in the hospital, I couldn't miss the trace of a deep scar on his forehead. His wife told me of a car accident he had once been in. Every wound, every scar, has a story. There are many physical stars, but there may, but there are not only the only, these are not the only ones we carry on us. We, offer, we also suffer from emotional and spiritual wounds. These leave scars not on our body, but on our spirit. These also identify us. They become part of our personality, who we are. People will come to identify us by these wounds. Given the resilience of human nature, most of us will usually compensate for our wounds. We will try to overcome them in our spirit. Some people growing up in an abusive home will commit themselves to a better family life for their own children. Having seen and lived with the horrors of war in their homeland, some will become ambassadors of peace and harmony. I recently heard a Holocaust survivor, she must be one of the still, few still alive, speak very firmly about the absolute necessity of overcoming hate. It is out of what they have experienced that such people will try to mold and fashion a different way of life in the world. We do not always act out the abuse that we have ourselves experienced. The Apostle Thomas went from being a doubter to a believer because he experienced the wounds of Christ. He saw these. He could reach out and touch them. 
At this gesture, Jesus declared as blessed those who don't have the same privilege to see his wounds, yet still come to believe in him. What does this event of Thomas's encountering Jesus behind locked doors tell us? I can think of a few things. First, our wounds indeed identify us. And so pay attention to your wounds. Recall the lessons that you learned when you got those wounds. When you touch another person's wounds, be aware that you're in contact with what might be the most intimate in their life and their experience. Another lesson is that our wounds are not necessarily bad. Even negative experiences can be transformed and by God's grace turned to good. Sometimes we wear our scars with pride. They're a testimony to what we were willing to endure, if not for our own sake, then maybe for someone else's good. Today we celebrate what we now call Divine Mercy Sunday. And our focus is on the image of the Divine Mercy. Now note that the rays of light come from Jesus' wounds. There is a message in this. In 1 Peter we read, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. A third lesson is that faith comes from experience. Faith is not just theoretical propositions. It is born of an experience of the divine, the mysterious. Here's a question that you might think about this week. Where does your faith come from? Is it from your parents, your grandparents? Each of us has to have a personal faith it can't only be what we receive from our parents. So is there an event in your life or a struggle that you went through in coming to your own convictions about God, about Jesus Christ, or about the church? Many people go through a struggle of faith or a time of disbelief. What is your experience of faith and its origins in your life? When we consider the first disciples of Jesus, especially after Pentecost, and how they spoke of Jesus and the fire that was in their words about Jesus, there was fire in their testimony. As they went about promoting the gospel life and leading others to Christ, it was not enough to teach them teachings. They had an experience of Jesus that was evident before they opened their mouths which evidently generated the faith of those who heard them. I recall once seeing a banner on a Curcio weekend that announced, you may be the only gospel your neighbor, your neighbor ever hears. Just as the early disciples spread the good news of Jesus Christ, so we are also called to be missionary apostles. This is a term that Pope Francis uses a great deal missionary disciples. Those who are followers and students of the teacher of Jesus, who themselves are sent to bring good news to others. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen, brothers and sisters. Now, I want to say a few words about uh, Father Perros. Because one of the things that occasions my coming here today is, as you know, uh, Father Perros is leaving soon. This is always a very sad day for a parish. Um, I don't know if you ever heard the story about this one priest who uh, got up in the pulpit one Sunday and he told the people, he said, brothers and sisters, I, I have to tell you that uh, the bishop is moving me. I'm going to move to another parish. And all kinds of sad look, looks on the faces of the people. And as father was at the back of the there was one woman who was not only very nice to the priest, but anyway, she looked very, very sad and downcast. And, and so the priest said, Mrs. Murphy, what's wrong with you? She said, Oh, Father, I'm so sad to hear that you're leaving our parish. I was just getting to know you and the like, but now you're being taken away. 
Well, Mrs. Murphy, the priest said, you know, the bishop assured me that he's going to send a better priest next time. Yeah, she said, that's what they said the last time. <laughs> it's always hard to, uh, to lose your priest. Uh, we hope it's not like losing Jesus. Okay? Uh, the priest isn't Jesus. Uh, the priest isn't God. Uh, but we appreciate what the priest brings us. Uh, the priest can bring us only what a priest can bring us. Uh, and when we get ones that we do like, like Father Feroz, uh, it's particularly hard to, uh, to see him leave. I can still recall, um, I hope I have the details right, I think you were in Chicago before you came here, right? So um, we heard about, how, how did we hear about you? Did you just write us? Okay, okay. You, you know, I get all kinds of letters from priests, believe it or not, and seminarians who want to join our diocese. And I can't take them all. I could never take all the... I mean, we could have, we could have a hundred priests in our diocese. But we couldn't, we couldn't accommodate them. We don't have enough parishes. We don't have enough money to, to, to cover them. So. so we have to be very careful about who we take. So uh, we had a, a letter from uh, Father Perros in Chicago. He was just finishing a, a course of studies. And uh, he asked if he could come to our diocese. And, uh, you know, even back in those days, I was into Zoom. Uh, most people only joined Zoom once the pandemic came, but I was into Zoom back then. And, and so I, I contacted Father Feroz and said, uh, my vicar general, Monsignor Charles, and I want to interview you. We want to meet you uh, over Zoom. So we did that. And uh, anyway, we had a, a little conversation with him and then thanked him very much. And then Monsignor Charles and I sat and said, you know what? He seems like a very, very good priest, at least from meeting him. We should, we should invite him to come to our diocese. And, and this parish was opening up at the time, and uh, so anyway, so he came. Um, it's been my experience since he's been here uh, that he indeed is a very, very fine priest. Now, he belongs to a society uh, of St. Francis Xavier over in uh, Goa, or near Goa, anyway, in, in, uh, in India. And uh, so when he came here and I, I saw how very good he, he is as a priest, I said, I'll bet we're not going to have this guy long. Uh, he told us that he could only come for one year. Well, we got three years out of him, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, as we came to the end of this term, and uh, I was about to write him as superior, and I said, uh, I phoned him instead, phoned Father Feroz instead, and I said, now, Father Feroz, I'm, I'm about to write to your superior in Goa, ask you about your staying, and I want to get your thoughts before I do that, in case I make a fool of myself. And uh, so he said, well, actually, Your Grace, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, I've already heard from my superior, and they're looking at a different assignment for me. And so I knew the jig was up. Uh, there was no way we were going to hold on to him. Uh, we have no claim on him. He doesn't belong to us. Uh, there's not a lot of our priests in this diocese who belong to us. We need more priests who are from here. And you know where priests come from? They come from our families. I, remember, I remind our people of this a few times, and I say, you know, um, don't hesitate to suggest to your children that they think about priesthood or religious life. It isn't like you're forcing them into the seminary or into the convent. You're not doing that. You're just suggesting to them, you know, Susie or Billy, uh, do you think God would want you to be a priest or not? Just say that. Just say that. And let them think about that. Um, anyway, that's a whole other, I don't want to give you a different sermon, but uh, anyway. Um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm deeply grateful uh, to the Father Ferrars for his having come to our diocese. Uh, you know, the, uh, nothing happens, I don't think, things happen just by happenstance. I, 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 I somehow believe that the Spirit is working all the time. We're not always responding to the Spirit, but I think the Spirit is at work. And, and we're the, we're the, 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 the workshop of the Spirit is our heart, our spirit. 
That's where the spirit is working. More than just out there, the, the spirit doesn't work so much in the volcanoes and the winds and the, the snow. The spirit works on us. We're, we're the, the, the workplace of the spirit. Uh, and, uh, and so I, I really feel that uh, Father Fedos is coming from our diocese uh, has been the work of the spirit. The spirit worked in him, worked on us, and we accepted him. And uh, we have no control over these things. Uh, we can't make life turn out the way we want it to be. Now, we can make certain decisions, but we can't form life. We can't do that. Uh, things happen, and, and as I say, I believe that the Spirit is at work. Uh, the Spirit came in and, uh, and brought Father Feroz to us. And I believe in the good work that Father Feroz is going to do in Manila. I believe in that. I, I think he'll do a wonderful job for the church in Asia. Uh, and we have to be grateful that the, the, that the Lord is working in his life and in his work and his ministry to bring about good. Amen? Amen. 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 So thank you, Father Feroz, for... Uh, I don't expect you to give a sermon. Uh, you, can, you, you can meet people and uh, have your own conversations. But uh, anyway, thank you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there we will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we offer up our gifts of bread and wine, we also bring before the Lord our many needs and petitions and those things for which we ask. Led by the successors of Peter and the apostles, the church will boldly proclaim the truth of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who guide the economy of nations will distribute resources fairly among all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That people weighed down by guilt may find pardon and peace and the divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our working week will be transformed by the joy of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sanctity of all human life, from the moment of conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic education in Alberta, for all the teachers and school administrators and staff of our Catholic schools, that they all be loving witnesses to our Catholic faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families that suffer from unemployment or need of any sort, may the intercession of St. Joseph and the genuine concern of the Christian community strengthen their faith and help them in their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all the Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing this sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your first spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence you rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Archbishop Gerard Khalifa, who is present here, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you. As they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life. But when you say the word in my soul, shall be healed. body of Christ.
My Jesus, I believe that you were present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Can you be seated for the announcements? Once again, it's a happy occasion for all of us, uh, Grimshaw, White Law, and the uh, First Nations, Duncan First Nations. Uh, for having Archbishop in our parish uh, to celebrate this Mass for our parishioners and definitely giving us his blessings and speaking nice words of, of me. Thank you, Archbishop, uh, Your Grace. Uh, it's been a lovely time to serve uh, in this uh, diocese. It has been not just a learning experience, it has been an experience to grow in holiness. And um, looking at uh, Brother Priest and the Archbishops, and lots of things been happening here. I feel uh, hope and energized uh, to be part of this diocese. Thank you. Thank you, Father. My dear brothers and sisters, today the Archbishop will be with us. Uh, this is a blessed time for us. The Archbishop will celebrate uh, one o'clock Mass, and in this Mass, it's a special mass for confirmation. Uh, we have four candidates who will be taking confirmation today, and we will have our congregation gathering again uh, at the one o'clock service. So Archbishop will be with us uh, for that service too. And I want to thank the Archbishop for doing this uh, confirmation for our candidates, and uh, we've been waiting for the Archbishop uh, to be part of our community, uh, to be part of this deanery for the deanery visitation. We last year, we prepared this year, and we had to cancel, and I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that this pandemic is uh, behind and we can have this dinner visitation where most of you and the priest will have an access to the bishop uh, to talk and to interact in uh, a much more uh, social way. I want to also make this announcement that uh, next Sunday we have two Masses again, one at uh, 10, our regular Sunday Mass, and at 1 o'clock we have the First communi Communion Mass at 1. So the First Communicants, around 8 of them, uh, we will be having their First Communion uh, next Sunday, and uh, they along with their families, and we also kept this Mass open for any of our parishioners who would like to join. So we have the next Sunday Mass uh, at 10, in the morning and at 1 in the afternoon. And my two favorite announcements, everybody celebrating birthdays, wedding anniversaries, live, happy birthday blessings. Becky? My granddaughter on Saturday turns 12. Happy birthday blessings to your granddaughter, Frieza. Great granddaughter, great anniversary on Friday. Happy birthday to your great great granddaughter, Friday. And Josh, whose birthday? Yours? Mom's birthday? 
Josh's birthday. Josh, happy birthday. Today? No, Okay, Friday. So, anybody else on online? Play now? Can we sing a blessing song for our birthday celebrants? Blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 